Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. And one more time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you all for coming out, my family. Yes. Yes. Like I always say, it's, it's not like they live right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And given the weather this morning, yes. me seeing them here this morning tells me yes, sir. Yes, sir. one thing. If it doesn't tell me anything else, uh -huh. they had a made up mind, made up mind. To, be to be here this morning. Yes. Amen. 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 You see, when you got a made up mind, oh, yeah. her, nothing can stop you. Can stop me. When you got a made up mind, mm -hmm. can't nobody, nobody stop you. Stop when you got a made up mind about what you want to do for God, uh -huh. then he will help you. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. So seeing, seeing them here this morning mm -hmm. tells me that they had a made up mind. Love. That they were going to support their brother. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because if you were here a couple of uh, times before that I spoke, I, I, I spoke about the invitation going out. out. Mm -hmm. you, you heard that one. If you, yeah. if you saw it on YouTube, the invitation went out. And as you saw in the scriptures, what happened? Only a chosen few made it there. Because that's what this is all about. The word says many are called, but only a few are chosen. Amen. The scripture for this morning's message will be coming from Jeremiah 3.15, and I'm just going to read it for you. Amen. Jeremiah 3.15 says, And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and hear of his word for the good and edification of our soul. Amen. Amen. And, and I want to talk to you this morning or just give you some food for thought. Amen. Food for thought. And the Lord, when I was inspired by that, that message, food for thought, it, it occurred to me that during this time, there's, there's very little on folks' minds except for what? Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody is thinking about Christmas in some form or fashion. The children are thinking about Christmas. The jobs are thinking about Christmas. The businesses are thinking about Christmas. They have taken the birth of Christ, which is what Christmas is. That's what Christmas is, the birth of Christ, the celebration of Christ, and have turned it into a multi-billion dollar business. So what I want to do this morning is, is just to throw some things out there for you, to give you some food for thought. Because I always said, if you learn one thing, coming in here that you didn't know going out, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. Just like folks talk about us preachers, uh, 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 talk about us, I always say that if I can bring one person to Christ, one. just one, mm -hmm. I have done my job. Yes, sir. Because we're supposed to each one, reach one, teach one. Teach one. Yes, and if sir. you can bring one person to Christ, mm -hmm. then you've done a good thing. A good thing. Yes, sir. That invitation that I was talking about in my previous sermon, I spoke about who that invitation is being sent to. Mm -hmm. Because you see, that invitation that goes out is not for the holy. Mm -hmm. Oh, but Jesus said the, 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 the healthy have no need of a physician. Mm -hmm. It is the sick that needs God. It is the sick that needs Jesus. Yes. And that's who Jesus came for. He did not come for the holy. Mm -hmm. He came for the lost. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He came for the downtrodden. Mm -hmm. He came for the oppressed. Yes. 
Because if you all recall, when Jesus came, the children of Israel were enslaved by the Romans. By the Romans. Yeah. And remember I was telling you about misconception. Mm -hmm. They had the misconception that the Messiah was coming to free them from the bondage of the Romans. And he wasn't. He came them to free them from the bondage of sin. Jesus died for our sin. Yes. He took upon the sins of the world when they put him on that cross. Mm -hmm. And that's just some food for thought. Mm -hmm. I think, again, I thank you all for coming. For those of you who don't know, this is my eighth ball head sermon. All right. <laughs> some of you, the last time we, we, we met here, I had hair on my head. Mm -hmm. But I decided to get rid of it. I got tired of what they call that horseshoe. <laughs> you know, where you got the hair around the sides coming around there. That horseshoe. And I decided to just shave it all off. And boy, you know, I feel a lot better now that it's all off. Yes. Amen. My brother-in-law just came in. Right. Right. We were just praying for the Hurst yes. family. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, when, when I think about this time of the year, it has a, uh, not only does it have a lot of meanings to me, but it has a special meaning to me. Because, see, it was this time of the year in 1999 that the Lord called me. Mm -hmm. It was on December the 16th that the Lord called me. And it was on December the 18th, which is today that he qualified me. And the reason I say he qualified me because that was the day that I felt qualified mm -hmm. to do his work. Right. Because just like when Jesus was born, mm -hmm. there was no fanfare. Yeah. When Jesus was born, there was no parade. Uh, usually when a king is born, there's a big announcement that the king is born. The king's son is born. There's a big announcement. They have a celebration for the birth of the king's son. But see, Jesus' birth was humble. He came into this world by humble means. And likewise, when I got called by God, there was no fanfare about my calling. I wasn't in church and I didn't get the Holy Ghost and jump up and run around the sanctuary saying, the Lord called me, the Lord called me. No, it was an humble call. I was sitting in my car, mm -hmm. in my driveway, yes. and my windshield was covered with snow. Okay. I had just made it through a blizzard yes. coming from Trend Engine. Mm. And if you ask me, what was going on there? What was going through your mind while you were I cannot tell you what happened. All right. I recall seeing a building that says One Heritage Plaza on 75 going north. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, I saw a sign that says, Welcome to Detroit. If you ask me what happened during that time, All I cannot right. tell you. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I can tell you now, it was God. God. Yes. It was nobody but God that got me through that blizzard. Yes. And there I was sitting in my driveway, and the, my windshield was covered with snow. And then it, it appeared like a finger was writing in the snow. Yes. And it yes. said these three little words, feed my, my sheep. sheep. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And then the words just went away. And I sat there for another half hour trying to figure out, was I hallucinating? Mm -hmm. Was I? Oh. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't see the words anymore. But I remember they said, feed my, my sheep. sheep. Yes, sir. As many of you recall, I was a deacon at the time. But here I get a word that says, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. And after thinking about it, I realized what the Lord was trying to tell me. Yes. You see, sometimes when God is calling you to do something, he doesn't make a whole big deal about it. He'll just give you something simple. Yes. Feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Now, just like with Jesus' birth and my calling, 
The angel of the Lord didn't go up to the palace and tell the king that Jesus has been born. The angel of the Lord did not go up to the synagogue mm -hmm. to tell those priests that Jesus had been born. Yes. Oh, no, just like with my calling, the angels went to the lowly of the lowliest. Yes. Okay, the, the scripture, if you heard it, was this morning. It said an angel of the Lord came to the shepherds in the field. Yes. You see, it was the shepherds that got the good news first. Yes. And unlike the king and those priests, the angel of the Lord told those shepherds exactly where he was. Yes. Yes, the angel said, because born to you today in the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, mm -hmm. Christ the Lord. Just like with me, when I got my calling, I did not call my pastor up and say, hey, I got the calling. Mm -hmm. I didn't get out on Facebook. And if you, I don't even think Facebook was on me. And I didn't get out there and send emails out to folks telling them I got called. The first person who got the word that I had been called by God to preach the word was my youngest daughter, Robin. Mm. Amen. All right. I told her before my wife. Mm -hmm. Now she went and told <laughs> her mother. And then over the next couple of days, uh, the word got out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just as a lot of things in your life, you have questions about why God would have you do this. Mm -hmm. How many times have you, you, you felt the spirit down and it tell you to do something? And you question it. Mm -hmm. And there I was questioning my call. And then I heard somebody say, how can you be a preacher? Mm -hmm. You're not qualified. Mm -hmm. Now remember what I told you about Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan is no respect of person. Yeah. That's all Satan was waiting for, for somebody to tell me, to my view, depending on who it is and how they tell you, Thank you. you start having doubts yourself. Well, maybe it isn't. Mm -hmm. Maybe this ain't what I'm supposed to do. There I was on because I got called on a Thursday night. Yeah. And then on Friday, I'm walking around wondering if this is real. Mm -hmm. And then I heard, you're not qualified. And that just strengthened that feeling that I had that maybe I'm not qualified to do this thing. Mm -hmm. You've heard the old expression, God don't like ugly. Don't like ugly. And when God calls you, He'll supply you. He sure when God calls you to do something, He will make sure that the avenues are clear for you to do it. Thank you. And there I was two days later, sitting in my car, still questioning whether or not this is what I was supposed to be doing. Yes, sir. And then a preacher drove up, my brother-in-law David. <laughs> may he rest in peace. Uh -huh. He asked me, what's wrong, preacher? You know, he asked me, he asked me, what's wrong, deacon? Uh -huh. And I said, well, you know, uh, I, I believe that the Lord called me a couple of days ago. He said, well, what are you depressed about? You're supposed to be happy. I said, well, I was told, and I kind of believe that I'm not qualified. <laughs> and then he said something that turned the whole thing around. Mm -hmm. He said, if the Lord calls you, mm -hmm. the Lord qualifies you. Yes, sir. And when he said that, I got a new, I got a fire, a fire just lit up inside of me. And that's when the next day I went down to the church and I told my pastor, I said, Pastor Ford, it's a different pastor. Mm -hmm. The Lord called me. Yes. And when I told him that, like I said, when the Lord calls you, when he gives you a mission, yes, sir. You keep this in mind. Yes. When the Lord gives you a mission, yes. he gets you in condition. Yes, sir. Y'all heard that before? Yes. Well, now you yes. When the Lord gives
gives you a mission, he gets you in condition. Thank you. Thank you. And when the pastor heard that I got called to preach, he put me under the wing of Reverend Edgar Jones, a man who had been a preacher for as long as I've been alive. And he was my mentor for close to five years. Right, he mentored me. Right. He even scolded me about my calling. Mm -hmm. You see, just because you're a preacher don't mean you're going to always get everything right. No, no. Oh, you're going to say things no, that you no. shouldn't be saying. Oh, you're going to do things that you shouldn't be doing. Right. People are going to see you yes, sir. in ways they shouldn't be seeing you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Master. Thank you. And he said, you just got to remember one thing, that when God calls you, he qualifies you, and when he qualifies you, he will supply you. Oh, yes, he will. Now, you know the devil is not going to give up. No. That's just a food for thought. You keep that in mind. The devil is not going to give up on you. No. Oh, no. He's going to keep hounding you and hounding you and hounding you. But you just got to keep him at bay with the word of God. Because that's what Jesus did. That's what he did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. The devil got a lot of folks with misconceptions about this season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks believe that Jesus was born on December the 25th. Well, if you read your Bible, you'll find out that that's not true. He couldn't have been born on December the 25th because you see that weather out there? Mm -hmm. It ain't even the 25th and it's cold. Mm -hmm. But see, the scripture says, and the shepherds were in the fields. Yes, sir. Can you imagine some shepherds being out there in that weather? Mm -hmm. Now, in December in Israel, those shepherds are stored away. Those shepherds are, those shepherds are not out in the field. Mm -hmm. So therefore, he could not have been born this time. Well, then why, why? is December 25th, mm -hmm. why was that selected as the day that symbolizes Amen. the birth of Christ? Why? Why? It all has to do with astrology. Mm -hmm. The winter equinox. Y'all know what the equinox is? Those are the changes of the seasons. December 21st, March 21st, June 21st mm -hmm. and September 21st. Did you know that come December 21st, that is the shortest day of the year? Because from that point on, all the days get longer. That's a misconception that we have. We don't give it a second thought, do we? Mm -hmm. But now you know. Mm -hmm. And so that day was not chosen, but then they just said, well, why don't we make it the 25th of December? So that's why we celebrate Jesus' birth on the 25th of December. In actuality, it was sometime around April or May, according to the Jewish calendar. Mm -hmm. Another mis misconception that we have about this thing we call Christmas, in this occasion, it is better to receive than give. Oh, you try to tell a child, you tell that young boy back there, oh, you're not getting nothing for Christmas, you have a fit. Mm -hmm. You fall out. Because, see, that's the conception that most of the children have nowadays about Christmas. It's all about receiving. But those that know better know it is better to give than receive. Because God gave us his son. Yeah. Yeah. And now, just like with those Christmas presents that you get under that tree, mm -hmm. there are some conditions to that gift. I don't know many children that get those presents and, and open them up and throw them at their parents. I didn't want this, you know. There are some conditions to receiving this gift. And it's not a whole lot of conditions. Mm -hmm. Because the word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth in him, you see, that's all you got to do when it comes to Jesus is believe. Yeah. Believe. That's all you got to do is believe. Because we are, we are lumped into two categories. The believer.
believer and the unbeliever. And I'm going to tell you right now, the devil will have you believe all these things that did not really happen. And we just say, oh, my goodness. That picture on that wall. Y'all see that picture? Look at that picture. If you read your Bible, that picture is not right. Because the scripture says, and they came, talking about the wise men, and they came into the house. You that look like a house. But that's what they have us believe. Now, there's nothing wrong with, with their narrative of it, but it's what the Bible said. Because God says, I am the truth, and all men are liars. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with that picture. I mean, it's a nice picture, but doctrinally, it's not right. Because Scripture says that the three wise men came into the house. And the scripture also says that they were put in a stable because there was no room in the inn. But they didn't stay there. As soon as there was room in the house, that's where they went to. And by that time, the wise men showed up. There are so many things that we are told and we all believe it. I, even when this COVID came out, I heard so many people say, oh, that's the devil, that's the devil, that's the devil, that's the devil. And you know, a lot of folks believed it. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I knew it was of God. I felt it was of God. Well, preacher, what are you talking about? How could God unleash that kind of disease on this world that's killing all these folks? Oh, may I remind you of Egypt. Y'all remember Egypt? When the Israelites were in Egypt, what did God do? He released plagues. And that last plague, I want you to focus on that last plague because, you know, up to this point, all those other plagues affected only the Egyptians. Oh, but see, this last plague, the angel of death coming and killing the firstborn. It affected everybody. Yes, yes. That angel of death was no respect of person that night. But see, God had a remedy. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He had a remedy for his folks. He told them to put the lamb's blood over the doorpost in the mantle. Oh, yes. Yes. And the angel of death will pass over yes. your house. Yes. Oh, that's what happened when that vaccine came out. That was the blood of the lamb. Well, Reverend, you know, uh, 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 some people, you know, they, 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 they still caught the COVID even after they had been vaccinated. Yeah. Oh, but did they die? Mm -hmm. Did they die? No. Yes, sir. That angel of death came down through Egypt. Yes. And it went through every residence. But if you had the blood of the lamb on your doorpost, it just passed yes, over your house. Yes, Hallelujah. And everybody that was in that house was saved. That's the same thing. The same thing. Yes. The same principle. Yes. You see, we serve a God of principle. Yes. A lot of times we think that God gets caught up in these issues. Mm -hmm. God don't get caught up in issues. That's, that's right. He's a God of principle. What you talking about, preacher? God does not care. He's not concerned with how much you stole. Mm -hmm. He's concerned with you stole. Still ten thousand. Still ten dollars. To us, it's a big deal. Somebody steal ten thousand from you, you're gonna kill them. They steal ten dollars from you, you might be angry at them. But see, when it comes to God, they stole. And I'm gonna tell you, can I tell you something else? Yes. You can't do nothing about what happened yesterday. No, no, nothing, nothing. You can't do nothing about it. Somebody steal $5 from you on Tuesday, and then they come back to you on Wednesday and give you $15. Does that change the fact that they stole your five? No. Oh, are you going to accept the $15? Of course you are. But two things will happen after you 
take that fifteen dollars, one, you ain't gonna leave no money around in their presence anymore. Amen. And two, when they come in, you're gonna be watching every move they make. Amen. They ask you to go to the bathroom. You're going to say, oh, let me check it out first. You're going to go in there and see if you left your rings and bracelets and everything. Did I leave some money in the toilet? Did I leave some? You're going to go in there and check all your valuables. Yes, sir. And if you find your ring or your bracelet, you're going to put it in your pocket. Okay, you can go in. Mm -hmm. Trust is a very valuable thing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, some more food for thought. Yes. Trust is a very valuable thing. And did you know that when it comes to trust, anybody can be turned? Anybody. They tell me that God told Adam and Eve that don't touch that tree. He trusted them not to touch that tree. But what did they do? Mm -hmm. Eve picked that fruit. Sure mm -hmm. The word of God tells us put no confidence in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Put confidence in me. Because the flesh will fail you. Fair, everybody in here, I've been, yes, I don't want to say betrayed by somebody, but everybody in here probably been, been, been disappointed by somebody. It may be your parents, it may be your siblings, it may even be your children that disappointed you. Mm -hmm. When you had full of trust in them and then something happened, and that trust has been damage. But see, God loves us despite ourselves. Oh, God loves you. I know that there's a lot of things that happen in my life that choices that I made that I know God was not pleased with. But because of what he had ordained for me when I was in my mother's womb, he intervened on many of occasions. Oh, the time that I was playing around with this bullet and I shot it against the... <laughs> I was playing around with one of my uncle's bullets and I, 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 I hit it up against the church and it went towards our house and, and it ricocheted off there and came right back at me. And I turned because it was so loud, and it hit me right there. Ooh. Nah, nah, nah. Oh, oh. It wasn't nobody but God. Nobody but God. It wasn't nobody but God. Yes. And y'all heard the expression, train up a child in the way they should go. Yes. And when they was old, they would not depart from it. There I was, a teenager, and I looked. And I saw that there was a hole in my t-shirt and there was some blood coming out. And the first thing I thought is get rid of that t-shirt because my mama going to whoop me. I did. That's the first thing I thought about. My mama going to whoop me. Till the day I died, I had the fear that I was getting whooping for something I did wrong. But see, when I grew out of that, they stopped and God started. God started whooping on me then. Yes. But then also, he was also there just like a watching father. Just a more food for you to think about. He's watching you. Keep in mind that God watches you when you're doing righteous, and he's watching you when you're doing unrighteous. I recall one day I was so desperate for money that I wanted to, to snatch an old white lady's purse. Y'all don't hurt tell this story before. Y'all have heard me testify. And there I was all set yes. to snatch that lady's purse. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I got a tap on my oh, shoulder. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I recall this. I got a tap on my shoulder. Nobody. And I turned around and there was nobody there. Nobody. But then I looked down the street mm -hmm. and pulling up to the corner was a police car. All right, now. A Detroit police car with two white cops in it. There was one or two things was going to happen if I had not seen that car. First of all, I would snatch that purse, and secondly, I would got shot. Because back then, they shot first and asked questions later. Y'all remember how they used to do it? They shoot and ask questions later. 
But see, it was nobody but God that tapped me on the shoulder because he said, Evan, you don't have a prison ministry in, in your past. He did not have a prison ministry for me. He wanted me to be out here on these streets. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. But there I was. And you know, whenever you are indecisive about something, you know who's there to help you. No. You know who's there to console you. When you're feeling down and you're feeling depressed, the devil comes to you. Yes, sir. But let me just tell you something. Let me just give you some thought here yes. that the devil cannot comfort you. Thank you. Thank you. He can console you. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. A lot of times he's trying to console you. Mm -hmm. And then he starts talking to you. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you start talking to yourself. But guess what I found mm -hmm. out since I've been at this church? that the devil talks to you in your own voice. Yes, sir. Oh, how many times have you been sitting there scratching your head talking about, well, that sounds like a good idea. You are talking to yourself and trying to talk yourself into doing this. It is the devil talking to you in your own voice, and that's why it seems like a good idea. And then you end up doing it. And how many times you end up doing it and it turned out wrong? Wrong. And then here you go. How many y'all know what I'm talking about? You say, I should have followed my first man. Can I get a witness? Yeah. I should have followed my first man. See, your first man was God talking to you. And then the devil stepped in there to try to circumvent the thoughts of God. And then when it goes wrong, you standing back talking about, I should have followed my first mind. In other words, what you're saying is, I should have followed God. Yeah, yeah. But see, a lot of times we don't do that. We talk ourselves just like me. I was talking myself. I was standing there on that, on that street that they talking about. Well, she's old. I could go by her in a flash of light, get it and be gone before she even knew what happened. And the devil was right there telling me, yeah, you got this. You got this. Of course you're faster than her. She won't know what to get her. The devil was telling me this stuff. And I'm believing. Yeah, I am fake. You know what I'm saying, nigga? Yeah, I am fake. She ain't no match for me. I was in martial arts. I could have, the devil was telling me all this, you got this. You got That's what he tells you, you got this. And then God, because when he tapped me on the shoulder, I turned around, and when I turned around, I saw those cops, and then, like I always say, the Lord don't always bless you with money. Sometimes he bless you with common sense, and common sense was said, if there were two white policemen in a squad car at that corner, and that woman was up there, and you snatched that purse, they would have got you. Oh, yeah. So you know what I did? I turned around and started walking towards them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say, yes, sir. The devil will take the word and turn it on you. Did you know that? Just something to think about. The devil will take the word of God and he will leave something out or he'll add something to it to get you on board. And he'll even show you in the Bible, just like he did Eve. He pulled out that Bible and showed Eve. He said, see, God created man and woman. Mm -hmm. Now, if he created you, why would he kill you? Why? And then she said, but the Lord said, and I'm just paraphrasing. She said, but the Lord said if we pick that fruit, we will surely die. Yeah. And then he counteracted with, I wasn't there, but I'm just going by what I, he going like, well, why would he do that? Why would he go through all that trouble to create you and then kill you? Why? Why? For something simple as taking a piece of fruit from the tree. Yes. And then, guess what he did? He appealed to her sense of vanity. And y'all women probably, I don't mean to be picking on y'all, but y'all probably, somebody tell you you can't do what you think you can do. Oh, let somebody tell you you're not a good mother. Oh, you will rip them up one side and down the other. But that's what devil, that's what the devil did read. He said if you take that fruit and you'll know what he knows. You will have the knowledge that he has. And, okay, and this is how he hooked her. He said, and 
You don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. And she did what so many folks do. She yes. said, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. He don't want me to know what he know. Mm -hmm. So yes, and she think that for me. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, especially in churches today, we get caught up in things. Mm -hmm. I told you I'm going to be moving around a lot. Just give me some food for about. A lot of times we find ourselves so caught up in the praise and the worship that we forget about the word. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen? Yes. You don't know how many times I, I preached a sermon, and then after the service, I asked somebody, so what did you think of that message? And they said, well, it was all right. What did you get from it? Well, it was cool. The music was nice. A lot of times, we get so caught up in the house. We forget about the Word of God. A guy was telling me last night, why should I come to church? I said, because God wants you to. Yeah. yeah, but why do I have to keep coming there every Sunday? Mm -hmm. Because it's a new experience every Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's a new opportunity every Sunday because the Lord said, it is good when we fellowship one with another. Mm -hmm. And that's why you do it every Sunday. That's why. Mm -hmm. To fellowship, fellowship, to learn. To give God praise and worship. The devil will have you tell you you're wasting your time. You can watch it at home on TV. Or you can pull up your cell phone and you can zoom in. Mm -hmm. A lot of churches just don't know, don't know that by offering that opportunity to their members, and I'm almost done, their members stop coming. Mm -hmm. You know why they stop coming? Because it's better to pull out your cell phone and watch the service than to get in your car and drive over there. Mm -hmm. Some people actually watch their gas gauge while they're driving to church. They do. Let's see if I got enough gas to get back. And you know the old expression, out of sight, out of mind. If I were to take a poll, I wonder how many of those folks send their tithes into the church, send their offerings into the church, even though they zoom in, is they mailing in, is they cash apping in. You know some church got cash app now. Yeah, got cash app. Are they cash apping? Probably not. Are they mailing those tithes and offerings in? Probably not. Yes, sir. And then they say, we got to do something. Keep this thought in mind as you go through this season. That while Jesus is the reason for the season, he's the reason we have this season. It's also about you. Because just because Jesus is the reason for the season don't mean that you're going to be 100% safe. Because I told you the devil is no respect of place. No respect. No respect of person and no respect of things. The devil will hit you at any point that he believes he can hit you. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to be aware of your surroundings. Be because folks do the dumbest things this time of the season. Mm -hmm. I recall hearing on a story about four guys who robbed a Dunkin' Donut. And they got $750 mm -hmm. and caught. And caught. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's just say they didn't get caught. They got back to where they were going. They only had $750 split up between the four of them. What's that about? $175 a piece? They bail is more than $175. Yes, sir. But that's the kind of mindset you have during this season. Mm -hmm. People starting fights in stores over a dress. Mm -hmm. People fighting in these stores over toys. toys. Why? Because they want it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because my child wants it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there ain't no more. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you got it and I'm bigger than you. And they start fighting over it. So keep in mind. Mm -hmm. 
that this is the season for Jesus. And when I say Jesus, I mean the heart of Jesus. Willing to give. Be a giver. And when you receive, be joyful. Oh, you don't know how many times I got gifts. And I looked at it and I said, wow, I got 13 of these. Thank you so much. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I got a gift, and I knew I had at least a dozen. But you know what? I was thankful for them. And guess what? I eventually went through all 13 of them. They was Home Depot gift cards. Amen? And I went through all 13 of them. Amen. So, did y'all get it this morning? Yes. Did you get some things? Oh. And, and, and let me ask, I'm going to ask this question. Did you learn something today that you didn't know before you walked in? Did you learn something? That's what I try to do. Because he said, feed my sheep. And that's what I aim to do. Feed you with something that you haven't had before. Amen. God bless you and God keep you.